and posted. New video's up. Why am I telling you that now? By the time you're watching this one, you probably already saw that other one. Anyway, I've got a job. Not YouTube, like a normal person job. I've got a daughter who needs stuff like attention and food and shelter, mortgage, same kind of stuff everybody's got. So finding practice time can be tricky, and it was the same when I was first starting out. I started in high school, so I had projects and homework and dating. Well, not so much dating, I was playing Irish music after all. But it's always a struggle to find practice time, and it is for most people, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Intro. <laughs> might take proper lessons and you found this channel for some supplemental learning. Hell, some of you might be my Skype students, and if so, what's up? If you're an adult, you get to choose how you spend your time, and that includes flute and whistle practice time. You gotta figure out how to work it into your day. If you're a kid, you know, maybe your folks make you practice a certain amount each month. That's how it was when I was a kid. I took piano lessons for something like five years. And I don't want to give bad advice, so I'll just tell you how that worked for me. It didn't. It wasn't until I started listening to Irish music and started going out to sessions that I decided I really wanted to learn how to do this, so I spent the time figuring it out. This video isn't about specific practice routines, so I'm gonna cover a couple of things. It's more about how to find and maximize your time. And I gotta go. Let's go back to the studio. First things first, let's say you've managed to block out some practice time. What specifically should you be working on? Everyone likes to play tunes. Everybody wants to dive in and do that. And that's cool, because that's, of course, why we're playing this music. So you certainly should spend some time doing that. But I can guarantee you, if you can commit some time to doing the basic boring stuff, scales, some of the real simple exercises, like that octave jumping exercise, uh, and doing them slowly, it's going to make life a lot easier for you. I always tell folks to start and end their practice routines with scales. I know it's boring, uh, but particularly the octave jumping exercise, that's one I think that's gonna save you a whole lot of headache if you can master that early on. That's the one, I'll link the original video, I think, up here someplace, I think that's where it goes. But basically it's just a scale jumping the octaves, so. And you wanna get it in rhythm, and you wanna get each note clean. When you're playing tunes, my advice is to play it the first time slowly, then up tempo, if you feel comfortable doing that, and then finish it up again the last time playing it slowly, because your brain's gonna remember the last thing that you do, and if you're doing it correctly uh, when you're playing it slowly, then that's gonna lock in there, and you know, the speed will come. Timing and tone are the most important things you wanna work on, if you, especially if you have limited practice time. Tone, make sure the notes are sounding correctly. Timing, you know, a, a lot of folks have asked me before if I would use a metronome when I practice. I never have. There's not any particular reason for it. I just, it always just worked tapping my foot. If that works for you, that's great. If you want to try using a metronome, some folks swear by them. People have been playing for a long time. And you can even get an app that'll do it on your phone. So give it a shot. See if that helps you. Otherwise, you know, the foot tap, if you've got good rhythm, then you shouldn't have too much of a problem with that. The last tip I'm going to give you, get yourself a car whistle. What's a car whistle? This is a car whistle. This one's made by Fado. It's cheap. It's durable. If you want to check one of these out, I've actually got a link to a discount code that I'll put down in the description. Uh, this video is not sponsored by Fado. I did one a while back, uh, maybe a couple months ago. They, in fact, sent me this whistle to review. So if you want to check out the video, I'll post a link up here if you want to see a full review of the whistle. Now listen, don't be stupid. Don't be driving through a school zone, flying down the highway, driving with your knees, that kind of thing. But, you know, if you're sitting at a uh, Taco Bell and you're waiting for your order, or maybe you're picking up a buddy from the airport, hey, at least you got a whistle, you're ready to go. So get something, keep it handy. This one I keep in this little side door pocket over here, along with my uh, ice scraper and evidently some ketchup packets for some reason. It's good for quick practice. If you find yourself in a scenic spot, you feel like busting out a few tunes, you're good to go. I'm going to go fly my drone here at this awesome park. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>